All right, welcome back to Newcastle Central and while the stations themselves may not have looked all that different in the last video that I had a couple of weeks ago some visiting US locomotives they have slowly in the background been working away on an awful lot of the station detailing pieces and so this is why I've said before things have gone pretty slowly in terms of actually building out the station um, I'm not panning the camera up because I am actually working on the walls and the roofing and stuff for the station that's going to come in a different video because I'm still doing a bunch of laser cutting there but it hasn't taken a long time to be able to do all these little detailing pieces in total we have 12 platforms at Newcastle Central uh, some of those are five and a half feet long and so there's a lot of these little detailing pieces that they need to come together so all of these are 3d printed I've designed all these up and printed them up over time um, got them all then painted up which has been fun again weather wise uh, hasn't exactly been conducive to trying to spray a whole bunch of different things um, but this was one where I just wasn't going to be able to afford to buy all of these um, with how much it costs to then get them shipped over to the US and just the sheer volume of some of these kind of detailing pieces that I needed I wanted to kind of design them up and print them myself so with that, I'm going to try and just tack some of them, uh, tacky glue some of these in place and see how it looks so we kind of get an idea of what it would start to look like once there's some of the detailing stuff on the platforms. Alright then, so the 3D printer is probably whirring away in the background and making a bunch of noise, but this is then what 25 rubbish bins look like. Um, I'm trying really hard to say rubbish bins and not trash cans. Um, but these are 3D printed as well. These were just printed straight in black material so that I don't have to deal with then painting them. Um, some of them uh, did iron on the top of whole care. Uh, a few of them didn't, but I think from a distance you're not really going to notice it. Um, they were do done in two different parts. So if we come down low, um, it does kind of go all the way through. There we go. So no matter what side you would look through, um, there's a cutout all the way through like there would be. So you could throw the rubbish in from pretty much any side um, wherever you were standing. But that made it really hard to try and print all as one piece to try and do supports in the middle. Because these are really small. I think they're 14 millimeters tall. Um, so uh, not very big at all and so with the supports inside when trying to cut them out and then you know these side parts of the bin uh, were I think they're 1 or 1.5 millimeters thick so these are printed in two parts there's the base part that's put together and then the top part with the four um, arms that come down and then they're just glued together so what I might do at some point, I don't know, it would be really fiddly, is to try and print some decals for these, just to literally say litter on the side, which I think is prototypically what they would have been. Black with then gold-ish yellow lettering um, on all four sides that say litter. But at least for now, I'm quite happy with how these have turned out. Um, and again, it's just all these little details starting to add up uh, along with all the bench seating with all of those um, information signs um, what trends coming next and what times and things like that there's just so much that needs to go into Newcastle station with it being so big um, but hopefully these all work out pretty good all right so that was what I think was 25 rubbish bins printed in black so I don't have to do anything with them this is then what 45 five person bench seats look like so I'm gonna put a photo up quick now um, I think this is when I had 25 or 27 maybe on the print bed uh, on the first print run and a little bit more is a second run after that just to make sure that I had enough um, these are all printed uh, as one and so on the bottom there is a little bit messy where some of the supports were in place so the idea is that they were printed like that and then you have what's called supports which are very rough pieces that then print on the bottom just to hold those up from the ground so they don't sag but overall I'm pretty happy with how these turned out a um, little bit mixed in that I think on the prototype for Newcastle Central at the time these would have been single bench seating so they wouldn't have been five individual seats and they would have been a little bit more curved um, it was one where I tried a couple of times 3D modeling for this just wasn't happy with uh, how they ended up looking. I found this which was designed for HO scale uh, converted it over to double O. Pretty easy to convert on a 3D printer which is why I like doing this kind of modeling. You can easily change the scale and so I think this is probably is a good balance between what would exist at the station now, what could have existed in some stations elsewhere and so these are printed in white and what I'm going to do is then spray them in a, a dark blue 
which is getting pretty close to what that kind of BR station blue would have been like. And so then I think the balance between the color and the fact that it does still is very recognizable as, uh, as bench seating uh, will work out quite okay. But again, 45 of these, Newcastle's a big station, so it needs a lot of them. Um, may actually need more, both of these and of the rubbish bins. And in the background where you hear the 3D printer whirring, that's doing something else. Um, and so, yeah, just in total... Um, 45 of these and then 25 rubbish bins but I may well need more we'll see once these are painted up once we get them out into the station itself and kind of see see how f full everything's looking all right so this is then what all of those benches look like all 45 or so of them not quite sure how it uh, comes out on camera but these are blue they're not black they're a very dark blue um, it was uh, Rust-Oleum satin midnight blue um, which may not be a complete perfect match to what they would have been on the actual station and I have seen um, some of the photos around the area uh, area different stations where it would have been a dark red um, I'm pretty confident that it was a dark blue at Newcastle Central um, but again it's close enough that even if it wasn't actually blue if it was red okay like I said before these also aren't completely prototypical what the benches would have looked like. There's a little bit of a sheen to them when I'm looking at it through the camera. It's not quite there. It is a satin finish. I didn't want it to be completely um, flat finish because there would have been a little bit of a sheen to it. Um, even after a few years it was still there, but I didn't want a gloss finish. So uh, in person I actually quite like how this satin finish looks like. Um, so these can um, go in a little baggy and head out towards the trench shed to get added onto the platforms along with everything else in a little bit now. So this is what those traffic announcement boards look like as they come off the printer. They're all designs that they would just lay down flat. Um, doing all of these in white so that I can then spray them, that kind of metallic silver, the same way that I had done with the signal gantries, um, print in white and then spray it with the silver, weather them up a little bit with some of the Humbrol weathering powders. And then the actual uh, TV signs themselves, the actual monitors that would have been hanging down from these are going to switch over to black PLA material and print uh, those actual TV monitors out in black and then they can just go straight on, don't need to paint them, don't need to do anything with them. Um, it makes it a little bit easier because the monitors are also a little bit thicker than this bar would be so the orientation of trying to print them would have been a little bit tough but I'm going to get these off the print bed, switch over to black and then print out the actual displays themselves. Okay, so this is what I guess 28 of these traffic sign boards look like. I am peel one off. So there is a little notch cut into them, and so there's a little support in there. So I just cut that out with an X-Acto knife, and then the idea is that the bracket that hangs down from the actual mounts themselves, either the ones that were um, standing into the ground, the complete uprights, or the ones that would just kind of hang down from some of the roofs, they all slide into the notch where it hangs down to make it super duper easy to then glue in place. Um, the first kind of test model that I had didn't have that little notch in place, and so while you could glue it in place just fine, it was going to be a little bit tricky to make sure that everything was lined up perfectly and that they all looked the same. And so I decided just to put that little notch in there, um, extend down the bracket that hangs down that it goes into, and it should be fine. So these, like I said, have been printed in black, and so they're pretty smooth as they are, where they've come straight off the 3D printer. That's without any kind of sanding or filling or anything like that. That's why I really like this Creality um, Ender 3. It works really well, gives good results without having to really mess with it too much. So those can then glue straight onto those uh, actual metal uprights. Um, they have been spray painted silver, they're just drying right now, so once they're dried then I'll be able to glue these on and kind of see what they look like. And this is then what those um, sign information boards look like once they're all put together. So I'll just grab one of them. So. The uprights have then just been sprayed in silver, uh, it's basically just an aluminum, and so they come up pretty good, and then you can see that those um, actual display boards printed in black, PLA, have then just been glued straight on there, so there's not really a whole lot that you need to do to them, spray them silver, and then uh, attach on those black boards. I will probably do just a little bit of weathering on them because they're a little bit too clean for what they would have been, I think. So kind of like the signal gantries that I had done, just a little bit of those Humbrol weathering powders um, just to darken them down a little bit. 
And there are also then eight of these ones. It's the exact same thing, but they're the ones that would then hang down from something that would be um, running across the top of the platforms themselves as part of the roofing. So it's the exact same design, but rather than the uprights, this piece is then just flipped over and cut off. But then the actual um, display boards themselves are the exact same. So I had looked at there are some more kind of rectangular types of boards that you could do as well. Um, I might print up some of those, I'm just not quite sure how I would mount them. And then in Newcastle Central there would have been uh, a pretty large uh, central set of display boards. And actually I'm just going to switch over and grab something from uh, more railway scenery that had kind of been the catalyst for a lot of this. So give me one second. Alright, so this is what I had actually um, started looking at using. It was an extra indicators and platform clocks um, from modelrailwayscenery.com. Um, so these are, you know, that's the thin card laser cut kits and put together and uh, glue them up. And then they had some of the um, printed paper that you would put on. And I did a couple of these. That's why I got the idea for the uprights and then for the hanging ones and just. Um, I didn't really like the look of them, it just looked like it was something that was made of, you know, thin cardstock and paper. And so that's why I ended up just moving over and doing these 3D printed ones. Um, but I do really like, it's kind of shiny, I do really like this idea um, of that kind of large, uh, the multi-platform array. And so I might try and figure out a way that I could uh, do something like that, that would go... It's as you would walk in from the entryway of the station, right when you come into the actual main um, train shed part, would have had that uh, scaffolding area with um, all of those displays put together. But at least this should keep me going. So I think there are 20 of the standing uprights, 8 of the hanging ones. Uh, hanging ones I'm probably not going to be able to do now until I actually get all the roofing stuff in place, but at least those standing ones should be able to go out there. And then I have been looking as well. I'm still trying to figure out um, if I can replicate my own idea. Try and come in where it is. Probably it's too shiny to be able to see. There we go. Um, but there was some print ads that you know you could put on what the uh, station was and the next train coming and the time and stuff like that. So I'm looking at um, maybe using the ones that were in the kit, at least on some of them. I actually have printed out way too many than uh, I could be able to cut out from that kit. So I might make up my own because the stations were also kind of all over the place. Uh, not really anything that would have been coming through Newcastle Central. So I might make some of those up and then uh, just quick stick those on. I think it wouldn't look too bad because the rest of this is all 3D printed and made out of plastic. And so then just putting on uh, putting on those actual TV display, mock display parts itself in paper hopefully isn't too bad. So I might try out one of those and see how it looks before we put it into the station itself. Okay, so this is now with some of the detailing pieces loosely put in place and some of them kind of being glued in place just with that tacky glue. Um, I ended up, I think I had 45 of the blue bench seats. I need at least another 12 to 16 if not more. The rubbish bins I think I'm just about okay on. I might need two or three more of those. The um, display announcement boards I think I'm pretty okay on those. Come and play us and see what it looks like. So, we've got the display announcement board where we're at, right around here. That's just kind of held in place right now while the glue dries. And then we've got some here that would just be hanging when the um, kind of roof would come out just over the platform canopy, uh, canopy roofing itself. And then, seats I'm doing back to back in a lot of places on the platforms. I think that ends up looking pretty good. And then we've got one of those name boards just kind of held in place, just reading Newcastle. I'm not sure if they're actually going to stick up like that just with the tacky glue. Might not be strong enough. Um, but you can see there's the station name boards that will be all the way around I'm trying to avoid showing you the rest of what's going on. But I've got them all kind of placed out. I think it does start to make a big difference. Kind of do this, and then you can't see what else is going on on the edges. Um, but this is then in the main part of the station itself, and so again, um, most of the places doubling up where the seats would be. There's actually going to be a wall right around here, and so the seats will be either side of that wall, but about where they would be. And then again, these ones um, for the the traffic display announcement boards. 
what trains are coming next. Those I would have hanging down because there's an external wall here and there's then just a very small canopy roof that hangs off so I thought that would be kind of cool on the outside to have those hanging down. Everywhere else though this is why I'm completely missing the bench seating. Don't have any left over here. And then uh, this is where I talked about you would have that kind of scaffold of 8 to 10 or 12 of those display boards showing what trends are going where. Um, probably do 12, one for each platform, I think. And so that will go around here, and then there will be a whole bunch of seating around it as well. So it's kind of where I'm at, waiting for that tacky glue to dry up a little bit and see how it holds. It may well not, but again, I don't want to glue any of these in place until I've got the um, platform walls in place and then some of the platform canopy roofing in place because I want to make sure that where I'm putting these isn't then going to interfere with where I need to have all of the uprights to hold the roofing. So this is just kind of loosely putting it in place to see what it's like. We'll see if that tacky glue holds and we can kind of move it away and get a little bit of a better idea. Um, if not, you know, I'll start to move it all away and uh, keep working on the rest of the walls and roofing. Right, so you're kind of getting a, a sneak peek of what else is coming on the next video. Um, I'm not going to try and move those out of the way, but this is what some of that detailing now is going to look like. Uh, I do have the display board that's kind of just been held up in place by a pair of those scissors. Um, they're kind of heavy just to try and use a tacky glue, but I'm happy with how those name signs look for the new castle, the seating, the rubbish bins, and, and all that kind of stuff. So overall, um, before I cleared it away to do some of the other work that's kind of hiding in the background there. Before I moved it, uh, before I moved them out of the way, it was looking pretty good. Um, I did then have uh, the 3D printer last night go through and do uh, another 20, I think, of the bench seats. So that should be enough. So they need to be cleaned up and they need to be spread up. Um, but at least for now, all this little detailing is certainly certainly going to be adding up. I need to finish some some uh, some more work. Like I said, I'm not going to talk too much about it, wait for the next video. I need to finish up some more work on uh, the rest of the stuff that I'm doing for the station before I can start to glue many more of these details in place. Um, but uh, I do like how it looks. So I'm going to put all of the models, all of the 3D models they had put together, uh, you know, for those rubbish bins, for those display boards, um, the signs as well, there's not much to that. And then the, the benches, it was a remix scaled up, but I'll link all of that. Uh, in the video details so if you want to go ahead and grab those and you can do the same with the signal gantries they're available so you can go and get them um, but I hope you've enjoyed this please do let me know what you think um, if you've enjoyed it, if you've got any ideas or suggestions as well especially what else could I be adding I know I need a metric ton of people I need uh, probably at least 100 150 or so individual figures I think on something this large a lot of the times where I see layouts you don't have a lot of figures and so it looks kind of bare and empty and I think that's just the sheer cost of how much those figures cost which I'm totally on board with um, but uh, yeah I need to figure out how to do that if you've got any ideas of other things that might have been in there uh, I have thought about things like vending machines uh, phone booths especially as well I want some of the old BT phone booths uh, things like that but let me know your thoughts and uh, we'll be back again soon thanks for watching bye bye